Hello, I'm Interpixel. Welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be creating this sort of Minecraft grass block and probably you've seen like all over the internet these sort of RTX ridiculous high quality shaders and that stuff. So today we're just going to try and achieve it just with nodes so no extra sort of modeling uh, needed and we're going to be using the particle system as well for this uh, grass up here. So uh, without further ado let's jump straight into it. Okay, so now we have a brand new file. We're going to create the first thing, which is the cube. And uh, I personally like a little bit of bevel on the cube, so it just doesn't look so flat and horrible. So just a tiny bit of bevel. We won't need any more resolution because we're going to straight away add a subdivision surface. And because we're going to be using some uh, normal displacement uh, that's actually going to alter the surface, we're going to have to firstly use cycles. And secondly, we're going to have to use experimental because this will give us this thing called adaptive subdivision. Uh, you don't really have to worry about that, but basically, dice and scale, the lower it gets, uh, the easier your computer will uh, explode. So, um, we're just going to keep that at 4 for now. And in our render properties here, if we go down to subdivision, we can change this to 2. So we have a more realistic understanding of what it's going to look like in the final render. Okay, so that's great. Now we're going to jump into the shading workspace and we're going to... Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> okay, when it says levels viewport, uh, this is basically meaning, so obviously we can't see the adaptive subdivision in the viewport, so we can just up that level, shade smooth, that kind of thing. Nice. Now I'm just going to adjust some camera properties, zoom, a little, zoom in a little bit, and uh, I think I'm going to make it 2000 by 2000. Okay, so that's a good size, and then I'm going to enable Basapatu. So now we just have one more thing that we need to set up, and that is the HDRI. And this is just going to give us some nice sort of realistic lighting um, without having to use sort of point lamps, that kind of thing. So we're going to go into our folder, HDRI Haven. There's a, I've downloaded it a ton. Uh, I quite like Chinese Garden because, you know, it's got a lot of... It's got that kind of dynamic feel and it's got lots of grass and green in it, which is great for our grass block. So here we go, it's just loading in. And I'm going to go to the film and transparent because we, I don't want the background here. And enable adaptive sampling. I think I'm also going to just delete uh, this point lamp here that came with the file because I just want it to be sort of quite overcast, even lighting. So um, the first thing that we're going to have to do is create the separation mask. So if I just get my pen tool here and draw the next <laughs> okay, so if I just draw what I'm envisioning here, we've got a very beautiful cube, as you can see here. I mean, like, my drawing skills are honestly the best. Uh, and then we're going to have, like, a thing here, like in Minecraft, which has this sort of wiggly line for the separation mask. We're going to have dirt here, and we're going to have grass here. And if you actually, like, think about it for more than a second, um, if we make this green here, then it literally makes no sense. Because if we can't see any grass blades, then this just looks like moss. Uh, but if you think about it in Minecraft, I mean, Minecraft is like, what, 8 bit, 16 bit? And therefore, uh, there aren't any grass blades. And so this is going to be just green, which, yeah, it just makes no sense. So we're going to have two layers of sort of the grass to sort of sell the effect. We're going to have the green wiggly stuff here as if it's like in Minecraft. And also we're going to add the blades. Um, near the end with the particle system. So um, first, so first we need to make the separation mask. This is pretty easy. Uh, all we're going to be doing is, uh, oh. but before that, we just need to set up a few things. If you want, you can press uh, Shift Tab. That's just going to snap things to view, so it's a bit easier to um, work with things because then it's not all because I like things organized. So we're going to add in a wireframe node. So we can just have a look at the wireframe. And I'm sure, yes, this is going to kill my PC because you can see lots and lots of subdivisions. So I'm just going to change that to maybe 16 for now because, well, I mean, we're not going to be doing much displacement for a while. We're just going to go to settings, change bump only to displacement only because we're going to be doing some alteration of the mesh bases and stuff because they're going to be being displaced. So, 
Firstly, we're going to create our own coordinates, and um, sounds more complicated than it is. If we add a texture coordinate here, um, if I can type, uh, then we get this thing called generated, which is where uh, I believe, what, which one is it? I think it's this one here. It uses the bounding box of the object, uh, and it places the origin at the bottom, well, this bit here. I'm guessing that's going to be the bottom left but depends on your perspective. Uh, but the thing with object is it places it, it places it at the origin of the object. You see that this point here, where it says Y, that's basically the origin. So if we move it around, then the origin's gonna come with it. Um, so that's basically just a little bit of uh, coordinates for all the beginners out there. That's basically just a little bit of a rundown. However, um, for some reason there's this strange normal issue with objects with the object coordinates where it sort of uh, calculates the normals before no it calculates displacement before normals or something like that but we don't want that uh all you need to worry about is we're going to try and basically recreate the object uh, coordinates with the generated so if we think about it we have our origin in the in, in this bit here uh, but we want to shift it up to the uh to the actual origin of the object you can see with this cursor here that's basically where it is uh, and in order to do that we're going to have to subtract where it is using vector math uh, and so this is going to give us three values one for the x one for the y one for the z and uh, if we uh, shift the x shift the origin by 0 0.5 it's going to do the same thing as the object which is great but the object looks a bit more uh, sort of vibrant and that's uh, because this is going from 0 to 0 0.5, but object is going from 0 to 1, so you see it's sort of brighter. And in order to change that, we can either use a multiply or a scale, because the scale just gives us one value for every axis. And there we go, and we've created a complete replica of the object. So you see here, it's like that, and then if we look at that, they're completely identical. So just to stay organised, we're going to box select and press Control J, which will add this thing called a frame. And so basically, if we move this around, it's basically just like a container, if you like. And I'm also going to just delete this thing here. Sorry for my beautiful drawing. Anyway, so it says frame here, but just to be nice, we're just going to change this to chords. And it doesn't say anything because that's because Blender's weird. There we go. If we copy and paste it into the label, it says coordinates here, or chords, if you like. And there we go. We're going to just move that. Oh, no, you do not. Oh, no. You think you could get away with that pesky little line? Okay. Right, let's actually make some progress. Okay, so the first thing that I said we wanted to do was create the separation, so like the wiggly line here. And in order to do that, we're going to have to separate each dimension so we have the x we have the y and we have the z and it almost looks like at the moment that this is like this is going to be good because it's like it's on the right line we have black we have white in case you're interested this is from zero to one and zero to minus one so if we think about um how we want to sort of display the z axis we can add in a math node and that's going to automatically set it to add and you see we can actually change where it is um, we can actually alter where zero is. What we're going to want to do is we're going to change it to subtract. So we're going to have positive numbers and we're going to pick two values where we want it to go from. So I'm going to get my annotation pencil out. If, if I wanted to like draw like a wiggly line, it would probably be something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this value to about here. So that's 0 0.64. So I'm going to add that in and then this is just a, like a mental note, so I don't forget. And then we're gonna go to about here, which is 0 0.25. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually get a noise texture, which is just like this, it outputs like quite a, a smooth noise, noisy kind of thing. And if we put it, oh, if we put it into our value, so we're adding um, Z to this noise texture, then we're actually going to get something pretty close. But let's say we want to sort of alter uh, where the minimum and the maximum comes from. And uh, that is exactly what the map range node is for. So if we add in map range, then you can see we have a minimum and a maximum. 
This is where we can manipulate the minimum and the maximum values of our noise texture. So what we can do, we can go to two minimums and we can change this to, what was it, 0 0.64? 0 0.25. And we look at this thing here, which I can change back to math. And you see, we're getting this result because, yeah. And we can all always like tweak what we got here. This is looking nice. I'm actually going to change the maximum so it's a bit more dramatic. We don't want to make it look like snow though, that, that, that's not our goal. And you can always change the detail. Uh, so obviously having it at a very high number is going to give this very sort of strange powdered effect. But I think maybe 2.5 would be nice. That's looking pretty nice. Oh, and before I forget, um, we can change this to the fourth dimension. And uh, yeah, it may look a bit sci-fi. Now we've got this thing called the W and you're like, what on earth is this? And what we're doing here, to be brief, is we're going to... We're trying to look at a cross section of the fourth dimension with the in the third dimension. If we change this, we're basically uh, sort of cutting a slice out of the fourth dimension. But if you didn't get any of that, it's basically a way that you can like randomize how it looks. So for instance, if I get this thing called an object info, you don't have to do this. But if I get this and I go to random like this, it's going to output a random value. And then if I change, if I add this to the W here and I look at this and I duplicate this object, which will give a new value, you see that they all look completely different. And this is incredibly useful if you just want to add some variety in your scene. You see here looking very different. So just going to delete those. Um, but the re real reason why I want to use the W slider is I want to add something called a value node. Um, and this is a way where we can connect it to all different types of things and change the slider in one single thing. So we can change things that are, like, are quite important on the fly. So we're going to do another A. So we're going to add another frame by doing Control J and just name this uh, sliders. Or, or values, I don't really mind. There we go. And if I just add this up here, because this may be connected to lots of other things. And I'm going to change it to zero now, but you see that thing like that. That's cool. Okay, so that is looking really nice. So uh, we're just going to group these things together like this, make it into a nice box. We're going to name this separation mask. Copy and paste that to the label. There we go. Bring it down here. And there we go. Make sure that this is using the vector actually. So plug the vector to the vector here. And now you see it's got something different. So I'm just going to change the scale of this. So divide by two. There we go. Okay, so next we're going to create the dirt sort of material. I'll just change this to be like here. So what we can actually use again is this noise texture. And I don't feel like it's looking like uh, like dirt, like this. So we're going to actually add a new noise texture. And we're going to add it up here. And we're going to make it fourth dimensional. And then drag this thing up to the value. And I'm going to save because... 2.93 is very dodgy when you're dragging these things, dragging this, and it always crashes, and that would not be very fun. Um, so, we're going to look at this again, and now you see that this is actually connected to two things, so it's going to be changing two things at once, which I think is pretty cool. God. Oh, yeah, okay, just leave it there. So, we're going to change the scale to make it look a bit more like dirt, and we can always change the roughness and the detail, so maybe the detail can be like that. Yeah, that's looking pretty dirty to me. So if we add a mix RGB node and we change this to the factor, it's going to determine um, it's going to determine what is two colors just to, you know, add that bit more of add that sort of texture and variety. So just as a demonstration, I'm going to make this red here. And do you know what's also red? The subscribe button. So you should hit it so it turns grey. Put it out of its misery. 
Okay, that, that was really bad. I, I You don't need to subscribe. That was honestly awful. Um, anyway, so if we change this to blue, you see that we're getting... Oh, if I can <laughs> at all. You see, um, actually, you see that we're getting sort of this mix between red and blue. So I'm going to change it to different colours like this. Make it sort of palish murky. That's looking pretty dirt. <laughs> That's looking like dirt to me, so maybe make it a bit more like that. Okay, nice. So, uh, now we have this dirt, we're going to add some rocks to it. So, so we're going to bring this up a little bit. And we're going to... I always think that it's useful to make these sort of frames because later on we're going to be compiling all of this into one big material. So it's easier to see sort of what is what. And you could use group nodes, but I feel like it's easier to see the actual thing so you don't have to go into group nodes and stuff. Okay, so now we're going to add the rocks and uh, I'm going to add this thing called a Voronoi texture node. And if you don't know what that is, I've actually made a video on it. So link up in the eye here. This Voronoi texture thing here, if we look at the distance, it's going to give us this effect where we have this sort of decimated uh, different like quads and triangles, that kind of thing. If you're really interested, then you can go watch that video. But we're going to change uh, F1 thing here to distance to edge. And uh, to me, this looks a bit like desert cracks, um, like what I did on screen here. <laughs> but um, we're going to change this so we get these tiny little rock things here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this thing called a greater than node. So here you see uh, it's giving this like effect where it's like super like, it's, like black and then white without like any gradients. And it's basically saying if uh, a value, so if we have these values here that are between 0 and 1 I believe, uh, basically only show or only make the values uh, that are more than this threshold white. So if we bring this up, you see there's less and less white because quite a lot of this is like black, there's not many white areas. So we're going to make, you can see we can make these little sort of rock chunks, which is great. So if we make this quite small, then we can uh, make these little rocks. Um, but usually rocks come in chunks or like um, clumps. And this is actually super easy. Uh, to sort of make little clumps of these by using, guess what, another noise texture. And if you thought that my laptop is going to fry some eggs tonight, then you are correct. Because adding a ton of noise textures is not good, but it's going to make it a lot more realistic. So, we're going to make sure it's like quite blobby, like this. And we're going to mix this Voronoi texture and the noise texture together. So in order to do this, if you have no Drangler enabled, if you don't, then uh, what are you doing with it? I'm joking. Uh, go to Edit, Preferences, and then search for No Drangler. So basically, in order to mix these two together, we're going to hold Control, Shift, and then we're going to right click them together. And this is just a nice little shortcut that saves you so much time. Uh, and so if we put it here and then click on this arrow so we can change some things, you see it's already working pretty nicely. We can change this factor to say how much we want of one thing. So you see here, this is exact. This is completely noise texture. This is completely Rhino texture. So if we mix them together a little bit. You see, we're getting these chunks, which is great. Uh, so now, if we change this threshold here, you see we're getting these chunks. But obviously, we don't want that many rocks. So something like that. Maybe make them a bit bigger, like five. Oh no, let's do small. That's nice. And if we change the scale here, you can see we can get smaller, bigger chunks, that kind of thing. And we can actually change this thing here uh, to something like multiply, where they're going to multiply together. Like this. So they're sort of going to overlay on top of each other. And uh, my greater than node is not working. There we go. Yeah, that's a nice amount of rocks. Oh, and before I forget, guess what? I'm going to change this to the fourth dimension and add the slider to the W slider. Um, so, see if we can change this. And I should probably make this a bit bigger. Just fiddle around with setting. You see we're just getting these little chunks like this. Maybe if we change this. Ten, perhaps. 
make sure everything is also sharing this um, coordinate thing here. So vector to there, vector to there, vector to there. So now we're going to group all of this together and just name the frame rocks. Control, control J to, just as a re recap, to things together. Okay. I think I might move this. No, no, no. This is good. Now we want to actually mix this dirt and the rocks together so we get a bit of both. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this trick again where it's control shift, right click. We're going to mix these two together like this. And you see we're getting this strange effect where we're sort of half and half, like this kind of ghost effect. Uh, and in order to change this, we're going to use the greater than in the factor. And now you see we have this sort of compilation of dirt and the rocks. And actually, before we mix this in, you see they're all white and we want a bit of variety. Therefore, we're going to add another mix RGB. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So feel free to sort of pause and that kind of thing. And we're going to mix in the noise texture from earlier. I'm changing the greater than to the factor, switching these around. So now you see here, we're going to get some different coloured or different shaded rocks. Now when we have a look at this, we have the dirt and then we have different coloured rocks. Great, so now we're going to just bring these back here. Okay, so now we have the soil and we have our separation mask. So now all we have left to do is just to make this sort of grassy moss if you like, um, sort of having that two layer effect of the uh, grass and the blaze of grass. So we're going to um, see if we can recycle a noise text from before because it's always good to recycle because you don't want your computer to die or explode. Um, so we're going to look at the different textures to see if we can reuse any of them for our grass texture. Sadly, I don't think so because this one is too detailed. This one is too blobby. And this one is just nah. So we're going to add in another, yes, another noise texture, um, just so we can tweak more settings. And we're going to make it fourth dimensional before I forget. Change that to the W slider and make sure to plug in the vector from here. There we go. So now we're going to view this and we're going to try and make like a sort of grassy material. Uh, so already this is looking kind of good. I'm just going to change some things. And actually we can use a noise texture from before I did mess around with the Musgrave, but it didn't really give the sort of effect that I wanted. So what we could do is we could actually overlay a noise texture from before, perhaps something like this. So using a control shift, right click, and if we right click this and then just bring this mix node up like this, then you see we're getting a bit of both. And we're going to do that thing again where we're multiplying or for some reason I have overlay but nobody else has an overlay option because I keep on getting complaints of people not having overlay. But um, you can either use overlay or um, multiply, I'm going to use multiply. And now you see they're sort of layering on top of each other. And uh, just to make this a bit more sort of dramatic, um, we're going to add another map range node. Not mapping, a map range. Nice. Bring this up a little bit like this and we're going to just change the sliders so in the minimum you see we're getting more of the black okay so that looks quite grassy to me so uh, we're going to add one more thing which is the mix rgb and like we did with the soil we're just going to change the colors there we go so we're gonna have a greenish and then a, like a murky yellowy green pale thing something like that um that's nice, maybe desaturate it a little bit to make it realistic. Okay, that's looking that's looking really nice. So, um, the final step of making the material, and let's not forget that we're going to have to do some displacement stuff a bit later, uh, the last thing to do is by compiling all together. So let's just have a little bit of a recap. So, we have the separation mask, which is this thing here. I think I might actually change some values now I have had a bit of a fresh eye. We have our dirty, uh, we have our dirt with the rocks and stuff. And finally, we have our grass material. I think is a bit dark and could do with a bit of saturation. So that's nice. So now the last thing to do for the material is to compile them together. 
So we're going to do our old trick of control shift and right clicking. So firstly, we need to um, so we need to mix these two together like this. And I see we're getting a bit of both. But the whole thing, the whole reason why we got the separation mask, so we can take this, put it into the factor, and now you see uh, we have the. Okay, this is <laughs> this is in the wrong one. This we have the grass and we have the rocks and the dirt and the dirt. First thing that I need to fix is that we have rocks here on the grass, which um, doesn't really make much sense. Uh, so we are going to get rid of that by using the separation mask but before they get overlaid here. So I believe, yeah, this is the stage where the dirt and the um, rocks get mixed together, as you can see here. So uh, this is what determines, this is what determines uh, if we go back a step where the dirt is and where the rock is. So actually, we can alter that using the separation mask. If we use greater than and have it at zero here, then you see we have like a very sharp mask for our uh, rocks. To so now if we subtract the greater than to there, do that in the other way. No, please. There we go. And there we go. Now we've done this. So just as a recap, we had this and we sort of made it more harsh with the greater than. And then we subtracted uh this to this and this is where our rocks are so now you see here um we can actually feed and um, save we're gonna feed this we're gonna feed this into this and now you see we got this and no more rocks here there we go i think that's a nice level of rock there's enough there Great. And you see that we still have sort of the uh, soil still at the top, and I don't really want that. So what we're going to do is, you see, with our separation mask here, I'm going to multiply it. And you see what, you'll see what this does in a second. So if I multiply it by 5, you see it's like there's like absolutely no soil. If you multiply it by like 4, or maybe 2 perhaps, you see there's getting, there's this bit of soil getting in, and this is because... Um, if we look at this here, we're making it brighter because uh, we're, we're sort of stretching um, all of the values upwards. So I think this looks better now like this. I think the soil is almost a bit too detailed, so we're going to just turn down that detail there. There we go, then there's a bit more consistency in the detail because we have two there, four there, but it's relative. Okay, so basically we've made the material now, and if we plug this into the base colour, change a few settings, that kind of thing bring that sheen up, bring that roughness up a little bit. When we look at it, um, it's looking pretty awful. And that's because we haven't added any of the displacement or the, the sort of the roughness to it. So um, in order to create a displacement, we need something called a height map. So a height map is basically a black and white image which tells Blender sort of how high up something should be uh, relative to the normal. So how much it should be uh, scaled on the normal. So basically, if I just do a little bit of a demonstration here, you see that we're getting this thing, uh, but we're not like scaling it like this. We're actually scaling it by the normal. So it's sort of pushing out perpendicular to the normal. So uh, that's basically an idea of displacement and uh, vector displacement is something different. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to be worrying about normal displacement. So in order to make a height map, we're going to basically sort of recycle everything here and compile it into another uh, black and white image which we can feed into lots of different things um when i thought about it i kind of wanted this grass thing here to be like quite uh bulky and then the dirt to have sort of quite micro to have sort of some surface imperfections but not much sort of actual displacement so uh we're going to sort of want to emphasize in our height map we're going to want to emphasize the grass and maybe just leave the soil as it is and also for the rocks we're going to have to emphasize the rocks for them to sort of stick out okay so first thing uh, is we want to just sort of convert everything to black and white uh, and in order to do that if you think of, uh, we can add them together using one single dimension so, uh, for instance, like an, a math node will base will practically just turn everything to black and white because they're sort of crunching down uh, the three dimensions into one because, well, a value is just one dimensional if that's if you can say it like that. So, firstly, uh, we can uh, look for the ones which are already black and white. So you see here, there's no need in actually 
there's no need in uh, compiling this thing here because that's just going to waste memory because already we have this black and white thing here. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to feed it through a map range node up here. This is going to be where we're going to make our height map. So if I just name a new thing, if we plug this into the value here, then we can change uh, how it looks. So instead of going from zero to one, maybe we can go from one to two. And this is going to look awful uh, on here because like it's going to get super bright. But this is basically saying when we displace it, um, the values um, are only going are going to go from one to two. So it's going to be uh, displacing out of the surface. If we take it to like minus one, that's going to displace it inwards. Uh, but we don't want that, obviously, because <laughs> that's going to look a little weird. Um, so for now, I'm just going to change that back to zero to one, just so we can like see stuff when we're compiling them. But we will change these sort of values a bit later. Okay, so now we have that, we're going to um, mix in the soil and the rocks in individually. So uh, for the rocks here, we don't want that, we want the greater than. Although, and this is a quite a high level thing, um, we could use a greater than, but then we're going to get these horrible artifacts. Uh, and uh, an artifact is basically, basically something observed in a scientific investigation or experiment that is not naturally present, but occurs as a result of the preparative or investigative procedure. And I definitely didn't like, you know, Google search that. Um, anyway, so we're going to get these horrible, like, stretching artifacts. I'll show some on the screen because they're quite common. So instead, we're going to want a slightly smoother gradient from zero to one. So we're going to take this multiply, which is the step before we get to the greater than, as you can see here, and we're going to add another map range node. So if we just get this here, then we can create a much smoother gradient. So we're going to basically crunch most of the values down like this. So we just get these. Now you see here, it's looking a bit better because we're getting these like smooth gradients. So if we compare these, they look tough. They look pretty similar, but this one here is just a bit smoother and this is going to be very useful. So uh, we have our grass, we have our rocks. Uh, now we just need our soil. Mix the dirt and the rocks and we're going to want a difference in sort of height of all of these different rocks. So we're going to just feed in the thing that we used before. So this noise texture here add that so if we feed that one in here then we just get these different values as you can see here nice okay so now the last thing to do for our height map is to add in the grass so uh we're just going to get our so we've already got this thing here so if we just mix these two together like this and we're going to use the separation mask um in order to just do that there we go if we make this black and white so rgb to bw you see we have our height map so we have the white pebbles uh, we have the quite um dark soil and we can always change this uh, when we get to the displacement so that's looking very nice so now it's time to finally add our displacement so if we go like this change this to height like this then now you see we're getting this thing strange sort of sci-fi looking thing so basically all we have to do is plug that into the displacement here and now you're gonna see we're gonna get some very interesting results and that's because it's very high so if we just change the scale then you see we get this and it's still looking a bit funky so if you point two instead we can always change things in the map range so we can change that zero to like one perhaps Well, I'm very silly. The reason why it's looking so awful is because we need to change our dicing scale down to maybe something like six. Yes, now you see we're going to have that more resolution uh, in this bit here. So perhaps we can make them stick out a little bit more. Actually, you no, know, that's a that I want to kind of settle something like that. That's looking nice. Now, if we look at it through our camera view, um, and we just do this then we can see we're getting something looking very nice uh, but it does look very plasticky so we're gonna have to change some sliders in this bit here maybe the roughness the sheen that kind of thing
nice. And then we just look at the wireframe, you see there's a ton of stuff here. You can see that there is actual displacement here. Because if we go back to options and we change this to bump only, you see it's going to be completely flat. So you can see that it's actually displacing. Okay, and the final thing to do is just adding those blades of grass on the top. Uh, so I haven't found a better way to do this. Uh, but if we go into weight paint mode, we just need to sort of... We're going to want to paint on uh, where we want our grass. Looking even nicer. And we can just uh, go to children, change it to interpolated. So basically, it's just adding a ton more hairs which have a parent. So if we turn this to zero, this is like all of the parents and then they have children like this. And we're going to change the render amount to 10 as well because we don't want too many has. Uh, something that always looks nice is when we click advanced, we can go to physics and in Brownian, we're going to change this to like 0 0.2. If I can spot. And now you see we've got this very wild effect. Just give that a little bit of variety. So. Uh, that's looking pretty nice. So the video of the main recording was actually recorded about two days ago because I've just been making a few alterations to the project and I've been doing other projects. So the main alterations which I did was um, to basically use a texture to distribute the grass. And um, I wanted it all over where the grass was uh, but nowhere in the dirt. The way that I did that is I used the separation mask uh, which is the way that we separated the grass and the soil when we were mixing it together to create our material. And once I baked that out, um, I could just change this to the density of the influence, change the coordinates to UV, that took me a while, so um, yeah, that <laughs> I was messing around with, um, I didn't realise I had to change it to UV. Anyway, uh, apart from that, I'm pretty sure I just used a translucent shader uh, for the hair, mix that in, and use the is strand function for the hair info as the factor and that gave me a pretty nice result so those are just the few alterations that i created obviously um these things about the three-point lighting setup with the infinity screen but that doesn't really matter okay so this is my final render you can see on screen now uh hopefully you learned some things in this tutorial uh and it was very fun to make this and there will definitely be more episodes with different blocks so thank you for watching. If you have any concerns or questions, then um, make sure to write down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, and if you didn't, then dislike. And uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Goodbye.